Hi everyone, I'm here today to talk to you about one of my favourite things and that is books that have haunted and or creepy houses in them. I had to allow creepy houses to be part of this video, so books where houses feel like characters in the text but there aren't necessarily ghosts involved or ghostly things because I feel like sometimes with haunted houses it's not necessarily ghosts but it's the people who inhabit them who almost haunt them whilst being alive. Does that make sense? Okay, so this is not a definitive list of the best books out there with haunted houses or the most popular. So there's no Stephen King in here, there's no Susan Hill. I've just pulled books off my shelves that I have enjoyed that fall into these categories and I've kind of broken them down into sections. So first I'll talk to you about classic haunted house type stories. And by classic, I don't necessarily mean old, but that classic feeling of you're in a gothic setting there's a pretty creepy house involved. Um, then I've got some short story collections where there are haunted houses at the centre. I've got some graphic novels, some picture books. I've got a couple of non-fiction. I also have some books where the haunting is more metaphorical or um, it is more fantastical, uh, magical realism based. So I have pretty much something here for everyone. I even have a really cute book about a haunted house, okay? So, no matter, as I said in the previous video, no matter what your scare threshold is, I've got you covered. So if you would like more Halloween recommendations, you can head over to my previous reading vlog too. Right, I was reminded to do this, one, because it's Halloween at the weekend, and two, because I have started reading The Haunting of Hill House. It's been a while, okay? I feel like I should have come to this sooner, but I've had a bit of a hit and miss relationship with Shirley Jackson's writing. I really enjoyed We Have Always Lived in the Castle, which I read a long time ago, but I didn't love, love it. And then I adore her short story, The Lottery, but I didn't love the short story collection that it is part of. So it's been a while. This has been sitting on my shelf. Now is the time. This is about a man who's trying to investigate whether or not Hill House is haunted. So he invites a few people, some skeptics and some people who believe in ghosts to come and stay in Hill House for a while. And they're going to investigate the stories that have come out of it and see if any of it rings true. And it says on the back that it quickly descends into everybody's worst nightmare. I'm enjoying the writing so far. I would also recommend The Little Stranger by Sarah Waters, which is set in the 1950s. It's about a doctor who keeps on being called out to this old manor house. His mother used to work there and the family now are running out of money. People keep getting injured there. Something is just not quite right. And he's drawn in by their charm, but also by the mystery of it. It's really slow paced and I very much enjoyed that one. I'd also recommend both of these books by John Harding. The first of them is Florence and Giles. This is about the nanny of Florence and Giles who has suffered a horrible, violent death and their new governess has arrived. But Florence believes that the new governess is there to cause her harm. So she thinks she better hurt her first just to be on the safe side. One of those cases where it's a creepy house and it's the alive people who are doing the haunting. It says on the front, imagine the turn of the screw reworked by Edgar Allan Poe. And I think that's a very accurate way of looking at it. I'd also recommend this book, which is a Gothic thriller set in the 1890s. It's about a doctor who's been called to this isolated women's asylum where a woman can read when she shouldn't be able to read and no one really knows why. It gives me Shutter Island vibes. If we're looking for gothic old house, I would also recommend The Book Collector by Alice Thompson. This is about a woman called Violet who marries someone that she doesn't really know that well. And when she gets to his house, which is beautiful, but ancient, and she's not really allowed to touch anything, she realizes that his first wife, who was called Rose, died. And she's wondering why he's collecting women who have the names of flowers, why he wants women to be ornamental, and why she's not allowed to look at the book that he keeps locked inside his safe. Tangle Wreck by Jeanette Winterson is a book that has an eerie house in it where time slips and things are not quite what they seem. It's about a young girl called Silver who's noticed that time tornadoes have been tearing through the country and if you're not careful you can slip in a puddle and end up in a whole different period. It says the world is in trouble, nobody knows what to do, some days are long, some days are short, time stops and then jerks forward. Silver lives with her bony, bad-tempered aunt and hears strange stories about the timekeeper, an alchemist's watch that could steady time again if anybody could only find it. And she lives in this strange old house which is called Tangle Wreck. The whole book is not set in the house but I remember 
loving this house when I read it. It is middle grade, but I read it as an adult and really enjoyed it. I have a few books here that use hauntings to explore grief and trauma. So this is Grief is a Thing with Feathers by Max Porter. And I would say it is about a haunted house because it's about a woman, a wife, a mother who dies. She's left behind her husband and two sons and their grief manifests and materializes as this huge crow that barges its way into their house and won't stop taunting them, haunting them, saying if they just are good enough, maybe their mother will come back. It's a really horrible, true, nasty look at what grief does to us when we lose someone that we love. Something that isn't nasty but is magical and is exploring what could have happened if someone hadn't died is The White Book by Han Kang, which is translated from the Korean by Deborah Smith. In this, she is writing into existence her sister and her brother, who she never got to meet because they passed away when they were born. So this is a haunting in the sense that she's bringing them to life as these ghostly figures, but it's... it's not a scary book in any way, shape or form. I just wanted to include lots of different haunted house stories. And, and this is her just bringing ghosts into existence in her house for comfort. And I think that that was really, really well done. I also wanted to recommend Ruby by Cynthia Bond and also Sing Unburied Sing by Jesmyn Ward, both of which are inspired by Beloved by Toni Morrison. And all three of these books use both the haunting of houses and the haunting of selves to talk about inherited trauma, to talk about racial injustice, and to talk about the history of slavery. Some of these characters breed ghosts themselves and some of them cannot escape their pasts, no matter how far they travel or or no matter what period in time they find themselves in they all use that magical realism to great effect 100 shadows by Hwan Jung Yeon is translated from the Korean by Jung Yi Won and this I'm stretching a little bit because the houses are not necessarily the things being haunted though often the characters are within the houses um, this is about a group of characters in Seoul in Korea who work in the electronics industry. They've been downtrodden by society. And then one day their shadows break free of themselves in a Peter Pan type way and demand that they follow them. So it's like they're haunted by themselves, but the haunting is this uprising. And I'm reading this one at the moment and really enjoying it. A nonfiction book I wanted to mention is Ghost of the Tsunami by Richard Lloyd Parry. This is a nonfiction book that was written after the Fukushima disaster in 2011. Richard was living in Tokyo at the time and he traveled travels to the surrounding areas and he speaks to locals about their experience of ghosts, of hauntings in their houses since the disaster and the folklore that started to emerge out of that about potential survivors. Pet by Akweki Emeze is a book that I read a couple of months ago and I loved it. This falls into the creepy house. I'm not sure it's necessarily haunted, though it does have another being within it. This is a world where demons are thought to no longer exist. Everyone's managed to get rid of them. Monsters have gone. But then one day, Pet's mother's painting comes to life and says, there is a monster and we need to go and find it. So it has that element of things coming to life from objects, which I really like in haunted houses stories, but this is something more than that. I also recently read D, A Tale of Two Worlds by Michelle Faber, which is a middle grade book about a young girl called Diccolo who has to travel to a different world to save the letter D from the alphabet because it's been stolen. It's inspired by James Thurber and also The Wizard of Oz, Alice in Wonderland, and also Dickens. And there is a specific scene in this book, which is just the best haunted house. It's called Bleak House and it's a hotel. And when you go into it, the hotel basically eats you and will not let you go. You wander into different rooms. The wallpaper is alive and keeps replicating itself and signs appear everywhere. It turns into this horrible, nightmarish maze. I loved it. It was my favorite part of this book. Then, let me see where I should go from here. Let's go to short stories. This is Other Stories and Other Stories by Ali Smith. And in this, there is a story called The Hanging Girl. And the narrator is walking and wherever she walks, wherever she goes in her house, she can always see a hanging girl behind her. It's really, really creepy. I also wanted to recommend The Other World at Whispers by Stephanie Victoire, which I read a long time ago and has several haunting stories in it. 
This is Outsiders, an anthology edited by Alice Slater. And in this, we've got a story by Savat Hassin, which is called, what is it called? The Lady's Not For Burning. And it's about a haunted house, a racist haunted house. And the ghost that haunts this house is outraged that someone who's moved into this house who isn't white, and this ghost is going to cause havoc it is an amazing short story i also love the collection as a whole if you would like some old school ghost stories gentle ghost stories haunted house stories you might enjoy weird woods which is a collection published by the british library and you might enjoy weird women classic supernatural fiction by groundbreaking female writers from 1852 to 1923 several of these are about haunted houses and might I recommend my short story collection The Beginning of the World in the Middle of the Night. One of the stories in this collection is called Aunt Libby's Coffin Hotel and is about a hotel on an island in the middle of a lake run by Aunt Libby and her niece Anka and you can go there and pay a fee to be transported to the world of the dead. Everybody there sleeps in coffins. Not all is what it seems. You may also want to check out the short story anthology Eight Ghosts, which was commissioned by English Heritage. And they asked authors like Max Porter and Sarah Perry to pick an English Heritage site, go and stay there for the night, and then write a ghost story inspired by that old building. I thought it was a brilliant, brilliant premise. I also wanted to quickly mention two books that I read this month, hoping that I could include them as books that I love about haunted houses but I didn't love them, though I recognise so many people do and will if they read them. So I'm going to include them, but with the caveat that I didn't love them, but you might like them if you like these specific things. So this is Mexican Gothic by Silvia Marino Garcia. I was so excited about this book. It's set in 1950s Mexico, and it's about a woman who is called to the house of her cousin. And she has written saying that she doesn't feel safe with her husband, and something strange is going on. So Naomi goes to this huge manor house to investigate what's happening. The dialogue didn't feel particularly realistic to me um, and it just didn't feel precise enough, I think. It didn't have as much atmosphere as I wanted it to. I just wasn't swept up in the way that I wanted to be swept up. I think if you prefer more YA type writing that is heavier on the dialogue, then I would recommend this one to you. And then I also read The Knife Draw by Patricia Tarrant. The writing in this is so beautiful, I cannot get over it. Let me just give you an example of that. The lives of houses are ruinously long next to the lives of people. Although the hearts of houses are strong, they are terribly slow. The heart of a house beats only four times a year, and every pulse takes a whole weekend. The infrasonic din of it is loud enough to frighten dogs, audible only in migraines. A creature is pinned in time by sadness, and houses are the tiredest, oldest, saddest things there are. This makes their lives very long. Nothing is sadder than a very old house, staring backwards through history at the kilns and quarries of its making. I mean, that just brings a smile to my face. I so wanted to love this book, but the way that this book talks about disability just made me really, really sad. This is a house where the inanimate objects come to life, the spoons come to life, and the mice are people-like in this house. And the mice witness the woman of the house murder her husband, and then the teaspoons eat the husband, and the mice keep on breeding. And there's talks about them being inbred, a lot of them having disabilities, and they call the disabled mice the singing mice because they love evil so much and they just want to die and one of those mice has albinism and her mother thinks of her as a monster. I really found it really upsetting. I've talked about um, disfigurement, disability and villainy. I'll link those videos down below. So this was just a no-go from me but if that kind of thing doesn't upset you then the writing in this is so good and I so wish those elements weren't there so that I could enjoy the rest of that book. Other Creepy Houses books, and going back to books that I love, this is The Bass Rock by Evie Wilde, which is my favourite book of the year so far. It's going to take something extra, extra special to top this book. It's set in three different time periods, the 1700s, the 1950s, and the present day, and it's all set around one house next to The Bass Rock in Scotland, and it's about how women are treated in different time periods, and how they are called out as witches for lots of different things, maybe for their sexuality, 
or for their behaviour, or in the case of the middle narrative Ruth married uh, in the 1950s, she is a stepmother and she's vilified for that. English Animals by Laura Kay is one of my favourite books of all time. It's about a woman called Mirka who's moved from Slovakia to the UK and she goes to work at this creepy old English manor which is owned by a couple called Richard and Sophie. She thought she was being hired as their nanny but they don't have any children and she gets roped into their taxidermy business instead. It is about old English heritage and how that manif manifests and turns into horrible things. It's about xenophobia, it's about homophobia and it's just so fascinating. I recorded a podcast with Laura which I will link in the description box down below. I'd also recommend Bitter Orange by Claire Fuller which is set in 1969 and the present day about a woman called Frances who has been hired to do an inventory of all these antiques in this old house and when she gets there a couple is already living and working working there who are called Kara and Peter. They sleep in the room below her but there's a hole in the floor so she spies on them all the time and she becomes completely infatuated with them and there's something about the house and the secrets that the house holds that makes her feel as though she can act in a way that she probably wouldn't if she was anywhere else. A couple of graphic novels. This is Lock and Key which is by Joe Hill and Gabriel Rodriguez. I actually much prefer the TV show, which is not something that I actually normally say when it comes to books, but I think maybe it's the art style in this. I just love the premise. It's about a house where you can use different keys to access other worlds, but also you can access places within yourself. So you can use one of the keys to open up your head and then you can walk around your own head like it is a building and everyone's head building looks different. It's magical. This comic book, it reminds me in style of The Walking Dead. It's that kind of art style. I'd also recommend The Oracle Code, which is by Marie Kanishkamp. This is set in the Batman universe, but you need no knowledge of that at all. It's about Barbara Gordon, who's a hacker. She has had an accident and she is now a wheelchair user. She's been taken to a rehabilitation center to get used to using her wheelchair. And in this rehabilitation center, she meets lots of other children who have disabilities. The representation in this is great. And then she starts to hear creepy stories of things that are going on in this rehabilitation center. And are they ghost stories? Is this place haunted? Or is there something real? going on. The Sleeper and the Spindle by Neil Gaiman and illustrated by Chris Riddell is not necessarily a haunted house story but it's a retelling of Sleeping Beauty and um, Snow White and Snow White goes to rescue Sleeping Beauty and when she gets to the castle instead of everyone having been put to sleep for a hundred years everyone has been put to sleep for a hundred years but as a zombie so the castle is not full of ghosts but is full of zombies instead. When I Arrived at the Castle by Emily Carroll is my favorite of her work. This is a queer graphic novel about a girl who goes to this Bluebeard type castle. I will insert my history of Bluebeard fairy tale up here and down below. And she is seduced by this woman who, um, I'm trying to find a page that I can show you because it's quite sexy in here. She is seduced by this woman who wants to ravage her in uh, more ways than one. If you know the Bluebeard fairy tale, then then you know. This is a graphic novel by Audrey Niffenegger who wrote The Time Traveler's Wife and Her Fearful Symmetry. This is the first book she ever wrote, I think when she was at art school, and it's called The Adventuress. It's very sparse. It's not for everybody. Each page has one, image that she's drawn and then a couple of lines of text. It's about a woman who's manufactured by a man and then is stolen away by a baroness. And when she gets to his castle, it's a very, very creepy place indeed. Let me find you an image of that. There you go. I don't know if you can see that. She's in a house, but there are lots of eyes in the background. It says she found herself then in a church amid a sea of eyes. And this was their wedding. Finally, I promised you a cute book. I promised you a cute haunting book. So this is one of my favorite Halloween books ever. It's called How to Make Friends with a Ghost by Rebecca Green. And it's what happens if you find a ghost that's living in your house and you would like to befriend it. It's an instruction guide. It tells you what they wear, 
where they like to go, like whether or not they like to go to the park, um, what games they like to play, what food they like to eat, what stories they like to be told at bedtime so that they don't have nightmares. There's even recipes in here so that you can cook your ghost its favorite food. It's just the most adorable thing you have ever seen in your life. So those are all the books that I wanted to recommend today. Of course, um, Creepy Houses, um, Rebecca, Jane Eyre, uh, all the classic books ever, but these are the ones I specifically wanted to talk to you about today. Let me know what your favorite haunted house, creepy house stories are in a comment down below because I would love to know. I hope you're all doing okay and I'll speak to you very soon. Lots of love, bye.